Hey everyone, welcome back to Portal of Wisdom. I'm back today with another story for you. Actually, today will be a continuation of another story that we've done. So if you are new to the channel, like and subscribe and click that little post notification bell so you get alerted when I post new videos. And now on to today's topic. Today we are going to talk about Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid and their possible escape from Bolivia. Of course, history says that they died in Bolivia while on the run and died in a in a shootout down there, but there's a lot of details that suggest maybe that actually wasn't the case. So we're going to talk a bit more about that and how Things differ from what history has said and their life and times together. We also mentioned that the positive ID of the bodies from the firefight or shootout in uh, Bolivia in 1908, positive ID was not able to be conclusively uh, determined on the bodies that were there after the shootout so anyhow this has led to a lot of people believing that butch and sundance were not the bandits that that were killed in bolivia and they had escaped so there are a lot of accounts that state that they both eventually made it back to the u.s and lived well beyond this 1908 bolivian shootout so if you haven't watched the part one video, I will have the part one video that says what history has to say about Butch and Sundance and, and their their lives and everything. So watch that one first and then listen to this one so you can know all of the historical details and then all of this will make sense for you also. So many people wonder that if Butch and Sundance did not die in the shootout, then how did that whole story come to be? In an account told by Butch's younger sister that said she met Butch in 1925 and she collected the story from Butch, she said that the story that Butch shared with her was that the story of the shootout and the bandits in Bolivia being identified as Butch and Sundance, that came about by Percy Siebert. He was a native Bolivian living in Bolivia in 1908, and Percy and his wife had credited Butch with saving their lives on a previous occasion, and they became friends. So Butch had said that there were many white people of European descent that were among the Bolivians. So when the shootout had happened with the two armed white men and the Bolivian authorities, then Percy had ID'd these men as Butch and Sundance after they were killed, even though he knew that it was not them. So the Bolivian authorities, they didn't know what Butch and Sundance looked like, so they took Percy's word for it since he knew them, and it was rather easy at that point. So, of course, Percy was, you know, one of their friends, and the Bolivian authorities believed he could obviously ID them since he knew them, and they accepted his word as fact, and that was that. Supposedly, Butch had also told his sister that after that, the heat was off and they could make their escape back to the States under aliases and live that way from then on. Butch's sister also wrote in a book in 1975 and said all the stories in the book came directly from Butch. So his sister's name was Lula Bettinson. And she died about five years later in 1980 as she was about 18 years younger than Butch. If you remember from the first story, uh, Butch was the oldest of 13 children. And I believe Lula was one of the youngest. So there was a significant difference in age there. 
So one story recorded in Lula's book tells the story of Butch robbing a banker. And the story takes place after the 1908 Bolivian shootout that supposedly killed Butch. Lula went on to tell the story of Butch walking into a general store. And I don't believe she told the location of this store. But the woman behind the counter had seemed very sad. And Butch asked her why she looked so sad. And this store was run by a widow whose husband had passed on. And she told Butch that the mortgage was due on the store and the banker was on his way at that point to the store to foreclose on her and take the store. She said she didn't have the money to pay the mortgage and was about to lose the store. And Butch asked her, how much do you owe? And she said, a thousand dollars. I just can't make ends meet with my husband dead and gone. Butch told her not to worry, that he would help her. And he returned to the store a short time later with ten one hundred dollar bills and handed them to her. Then he told her to make sure she got a signed receipt that was clearly marked as paid in full for her mortgage. Then Butch hid outside of the town and waited for the banker to pass by after he had been paid by the widow. When the banker passed by, Butch robbed him and got his money back. And Butch had told his sister Lula that this was so successful that I paid off more than one mortgage in the same way. So Lula did say that Butch spent very little time after his return to southern Utah as he wanted to maintain his cover. So apparently he just visited southern Utah once or twice, but pretty much stayed out of the area. She said that he had lived mostly in Wyoming, Oregon, Washington, and California. And she said he moved around often to help maintain his cover. Lula also mentioned that Robert Leroy Parker, or Butch Cassidy as we know him, died in the fall of 1937 in the Pacific Northwest. She said he was buried under the name that uh, is a family secret, and she didn't even tell her own kids any of those details as to where he was buried. So another thing of note is that the gentleman named Carlos Perro, he was the courier that was robbed by the two American masked men in Bolivia on November 3rd or 4th of 1908. And he was the one robbed of that mining payroll that he did ID the two men from the robbery as the same two men that were in the shootout. But we don't know if those men were really even Butch or Sundance. Also, Carlos Perro only saw their eyes during the robbery. So could he be really sure three days later that those men were even the same two men? So it seems possible that the two men in the shootout could have been the same men and they were not Butch and Sundance. Or the two robbers could have been Butch and Sundance, but the two killed men were not them. So anyhow, his, his account did cast question on whether he could even positively identify them with uh, hats and bandanas over their faces and only their eyes being visible, whether he would really be able to tell if the dead men were the same two men or if he would just be guessing. Also, just like Billy the Kid, no pictures were taken of the dead bodies after the Bolivian shootout, so we have no photo comparison to make a determination one way or another with that. Researchers Daniel Buck and Ann Meadows, who I believe were husband and wife, they dug through archives and research to track down the story of what really happened to Butch and Sundance. And I believe they worked for many, many years on a lot of research and details. And Anne detailed things in her book, Digging Up Butch and Sundance. She said that the paper trail seemed to show that they were dead from the shootout, but conclusive evidence was not there to support the paper trail. 
So they enlisted the help of famous Nazi war criminal hunter Clyde Snow, who had identified the remains of Joseph Mengele in Brazil. And he got permission to exhume the bodies in San Vicente Cemetery in Bolivia. And he was guided to the right spot by an elderly man who was present during the shootout and the burial. And this took place in 1991. So he unearthed the two bodies and the DNA comparison with members of Butch's family and I believe Sundance's family. They did not match. And at that point, it was determined that they thought one of the skeletons was likely that of German miner Gustav Zimmer, who had worked in the area. So this seemed to prove that these two bodies were not Butch and Sundance. But then, of course, you have some people that think, well, maybe that wasn't the exact burial spot and... If that was the exact burial spot, then this definitely was not Butch and Sundance, and those two bodies were in this burial spot that uh, where they were supposed to be. So there is a whole other saga when it comes to Butch Cassidy's escape that points to a, a really interesting picture. A 200-page manuscript was found many years ago, and it was titled Bandit Invincible, The Story of Butch Cassidy. And the manuscript dates to 1934, and it was about twice as long as a previously known unpublished manuscript that was out there by William T. Phillips by the same title. So, obviously, there, there's two of these manuscripts. One was known, and one was a much more expanded version of the same manuscript. William T. Phillips was a machinist who died in Spokane, Washington in 1937. Utah rare, uh, rare book collector Brent Ashworth and Montana author Larry Pointer, I believe they worked together, and they believed, along with many others, that this book was actually an autobiography by none other than Butch Cassidy himself. And they believed that William T. Phillips was his alias when he returned from South America, or at some point after he returned from South America, he adopted this alias. They state that there are details in this account or manuscript that could only be known by Butch himself. It was well known that Butch was involved in a bank robbery in Telluride, Colorado in 1889 and that the gang hid out in northern Wyoming at the Hole in the Wall hideout in Johnson County and possibly another hideout. And Butch was acquainted with the cattle rustlers here. This becomes important in a bit here. Butch happened to not be around this area too much longer after the 1889 robbery. And a little while later is when the Johnson County Cattle War erupted here in 1892. And Butch had known the players on both sides from being in this area and being prominent and hiding out here. And he knew a lot of the cattle rustlers and he knew a lot of the cattle barons. So this is important as it relates to the story being told in Bandit Invincible, this manuscript. And, you know, we know Butch was sent to the Wyoming State Penitentiary around this time for cattle rustling. So the Johnson County War of 1892, that was the name given to the events that happened in Johnson County, Wyoming, where the cattle barons hunted down cattle rustling homesteaders of the area. And in the manuscript Bandit Invincible, it tells the story of Butch in prison in 1895 in Wyoming, and the judge offered to let bygones be bygones and seek a pardon for Butch, but Butch refused to shake his hand and agree. It also states how Butch didn't accept the friendly advances of the judge's friend, another judge named Jay Torrey. Now, why would this be? Well, the reason for this was that Butch had already sued Tory's ranch for taking eight of Butch's cattle. 
So the people that believe that Butch penned this manuscript say that no other biography writer would either A, know these details, or B, wouldn't even mention them as it means nothing to the average reader, but would definitely have been of significance to someone like Butch writing his memoirs. So in 1896, the Wyoming governor pardoned Butch anyway. In Bandit Invincible, the writer also tells how Ed Seeley, a cattle rustler, told Butch and his gang how to find the remote hideout in Bighorn Canyon, Wyoming, where Butch and his gang hid out more than the Hole in the Wall hideout. And that was because the Hole in the Wall hideout became pretty well known to authorities in the area. So the writer told the story how in 1891, cattle rustler Ed Seeley hid there in Bighorn Canyon, and unless you had a guide that knew the area very well, you would never find this place. So it just so happens that Butch was in the Wyoming State Penitentiary with none other than a man named Ed Seeley. Another fact that no biographer would know unless you were penning your own autobiography. The ending of the manuscript makes some think it was embellished at the end to try to sell it to Hollywood, and this could account for the expanded version of the original version. So at the end of the manuscript that people believe maybe was penned to try to sell to make a Hollywood movie, the manuscript has Sundance being killed in Bolivia and Butch escapes South America to have plastic surgery in Paris and then come back to the U.S. to be with his girlfriend in Wyoming. Butch did have a girlfriend in Wyoming, of course, so that may still be noteworthy, though. The people that believe Butch and William T. Phillips were the same person note that the earliest documentation of Phillips is in Michigan in 1908, three months after the uh, last known written letters from Bolivia had arrived in the U.S. And William T. Phillips appears in Michigan due to his marriage to Gertrude Livesay in Adrian, Michigan, I believe. So the couple then moved to Spokane, Washington in 1911, and a couple of their closest friends did say that William had told him that he was the famous outlaw. And in 1934, William T. Phillips made a trip to the Lander, Wyoming area where he camped out in the Wind River Range and told stories about the Wild Bunch and he dug holes looking for buried loot. Many people in this area, including one of Butch's old girlfriends, said that he was in fact Butch Cassidy. Even when questioned after William T. Phillips' death in 1937, his stepson, William R. Phillips, said that he believed his stepfather was, in fact, Butch Cassidy. There was another historian that did a lot of research and told a story with very similar events of what happened to Butch and Sundance. This historian, named Marilyn Grace, spent three decades doing research. And a couple of her research details do vary a little bit, as she said she found evidence that Butch and Sundance did not stay in Bolivia very long. Once Sundance's partner at a place went back to San Francisco around 1905, Butch and Sundance prepared to sell their ranch and belongings due to the Pinkertons finding them already in Bolivia. So her research said that they arranged a boat to take them to Pernambuco, which I believe is in Brazil, and then to get on board a ship that was bound for Europe. And she said they arrived in Paris around 1906, and Butch found famous plastic surgeon Dr. Louis um, Ombre Downey. And he was the head surgeon since 1902 at one of the Parisian hospitals. And apparently he taught surgery all around the world, and he was very well known. She said Butch had him alter his nose and ears and reduce his jawline so that he was no longer recognizable as Butch Cassidy. Apparently at this time, Sundance went home to Utah, where 
he had a wife and six stepchildren, as no one would suspect he was Sundance Kid with a wife and all those kids. Plus, he had people around him willing to hide him. So at this point, he supposedly went by the name William Henry Long. In Paris, Butch and Sundance had vowed to not reach out to each other for fear of being discovered. So once back in the States in 1907, um, Butch eventually landed in Spokane, Washington, and he went to a library and he discovered in the archives that a young boy had died many years earlier that would have been about his age. And the name of that boy was William Thaddeus Phillips. So she said in her research, she determined that he assumed, or Butch assumed that name at that point. And soon after that, in 1908, he discovered that their friend and head of the Concordia tin mine in Bolivia, Percy Siebert, had identified two dead American bandits as Butch and Sundance. So now the heat was pretty much off. She said Butch was careful to research the family and especially the parents of William Thaddeus Phillips in case anyone ever asked so that he had a background also. And Butch started attending church and he did not go back to the Mormon faith possibly to avoid being recognized or possibly because he also liked to have a few drinks now and then. Either way, it was here that he met Gertrude Livesay and... They eventually got married, and Butch was William T. Phillips at, at that point, and he started the Phillips Manufacturing Company that made parts for adding machines and listing machines. This is all from uh, Marilyn's research. So she said they couldn't have a family, so they adopted a boy, and then the 1929 stock market crash and Great Depression hit them very hard, and they lost the business and everything but the house. So this was the story of Butch and Sundance, according to historian Marilyn Grace, which a lot of the details match up. A few things and a few dates uh, vary a little bit as to when they might have been in Bolivia or Paris or came back to the U.S., but the general flow is approximately the same. So I'm not sure what your opinion is of what happened to Butch and Sundance, but it seems very possible that they may not have died on that fateful day in Bolivia in 1908. You can let us know in the comments if you have other thoughts.